Welcome back guys. In the last lecture we have discussed about the bootstrap and entity. So now in this lecture we are going to work on the registration form. So first of all I am going to get rid of all the stuff in the index.css as well as the app.js. So just clean up everything. Close everything app.js register login. So let's open app.js. So just copy this import statement and put it in the index.js. Where is it? Yeah. So here I will add. Still we are getting the same error. Warning node modules entity why it is causing it is related to the webpack but I am not even using the webpack. So components time picker style index URL is not supported. Okay, you can leave it. This is not related to our coding. So this is from the entity. So let's import at the top. Yeah, so now let's go to the app.js and remove everything here in the content area. And also remove this uh, p5. We can remove the class name itself. So now just import the browser router import browser router routes and uh, route from react router dom react router dom. So the parent element should be browser router browser router. Okay, I'll get rid of this. Yeah. So inside this we have to write the routes. Routes. Then we should have the login first. Route. Path will be login and element not component element should be login so now let's go to the next one this is register element should be register so let's import both here import login from login register this is not components this is pages so i am using the github copilot auto suggestions so i will get the suggestions like this if you want to use you can use it by configuring the github copilot in your visual studio code so pages that's all yeah we don't have any errors let's see so in the localhost 3000 we don't have anything if i go to the login here also I don't have anything. Let me check if we got any errors. Function does not valid react child. Okay. It should be in the components. I have written directly. Copy and put it inside the components. Register. Yeah, now it should render. Here you can see I got the login. If I go to register. I'll get the register. So now I will open our deployed version to see the mockup or prototype. She health dot Heroku app Heroku dot app. Okay, it's Heroku app dot com. So we will be following these the deployed version as our prototype to develop all the pages and the functionalities. So let me close this as well as the old one. It's loading. Please wait. Yeah, here you can see it got loaded successfully. 
so this is the login page if i go to register and this is the registration page so don't worry about the complete styling at the beginning of itself so we are going to work on the styling later first we will design the normal components and we will complete the functionality so later we can spend time on the styling part so let me go and write the register page first pages register so just get rid of everything here and i will write the add with the class name is equal to <coughs> auth or authentication authentication so in this i'll put one more div with the class name register form or you can write authentication form authentication form so just put the title of the form here h1 register that's all so this is the deployed version this is the current version so i'm going to write different name for the current version so share healthy dev so you would understand the difference better yeah and this is the dev version so by seeing the prototype of the deployed version we are going to develop the current version so now i am going to get this register at the center of the page as like the deployed version so let's go to the src index.css so i am going to write the complete styling in this index.css folder only not folder file but i am going to write the comments for the better understanding so first i am going to write the comment authentication pages pages so here i'll just write dot authentication so here i'll just write height is equal to 100 vh display is equal to flex align item center align item center justify content center so whatever the content which is present in the authentication div that will be placed at the center of the page here you can see we got register at the center of the page now instead of this register we are going to have the entity form with the form title nice to meet you so instead of having the normal text like register we'll be having the nice to meet you so first of all i am going to have one uh, style like card so here i'll just write common styling common styling so common styling means which will be used in all the pages so here i just write card dot card so for card i am going to write uh, box shadow is equal to 002 px gray this is the card box shadow so now i am going to create a card in the register so this is the authentication form right so here only i'll just add the class name card so in this card i will write one h1 text nice to meet you nice to meet you so we got the text here you can see nice to meet you now i'll go to the index.css in the common styling only i will add text related styling so first one is card title for card title we'll be having some styling like font size is equal to uh, 1.5 m font weight is equal to bold so i am getting the auto suggestions so that would be better and now i am going to write normal text normal text normal text is equal to font size i just want uh, 1 rem that means 16 pixels we got card title and we got normal text so these are enough for now now let's go to the register.js and for this h1 text you just need to apply the class name card title yeah looking clean now 
so now let's go to the authentication form styling or else here only we could add padding 5 oh padding 5 is too high let me write padding 2 yeah this looks clean and also uh, we have this authentication form right copy this and put it here and just write width is equal to 400 pixels by default later we will increase it okay now we need to get the form so we are going to get the form based on the entity so let's go to the entity entity forms so you just need to follow some documentation or else i will explain so here you can see you have to go through this documentation so you will understand how to use the forms in the entity so i don't have that much of time to go and explain everything here so i will explain by writing the code itself so if i go to register after the h1 i am going to have form from the entity i got the form now for every form element there will be a wrapper in the entity that is form dot item so for every form element nothing but input field select field radio button anything form dot item will be common form dot item so in this form dot item you have to put the specific field that you require so i want only input want only input from the entity now for this form item you have to add some props the first one will be label name or label label is equal to name then we will be having the name prop so based on this name only entity forms will work so name should be unique for every form element so here it should be normal name now for the input also i am going to write placeholder prop name now let's see the output once how it is looking here you can see we got the input field now it should be in the horizontal here you can see this is the label name and this is the field i don't want horizontal i want vertical so for that you just need to have one prop called as the layout for the form element so layout is equal to vertical layout is equal to vertical now you can see name and form item so now let's copy this and replicate for the email here also email so for normal names i am not using the capital letters i will be using the camel case only first c is small second c is capital so the third one will be password here also password and here also password i am not putting the confirm password if you want you can here also email yeah so here you can see i got three different fields now name email and password so first of all i will remove the border radius for the card i'll go to the index dot so box shadow we have where is the border radius is applying so border radius is equal to zero and i'll make it important yeah now we don't have any border radius so now the time for changing the entity default styling so we have the name uh, email input field all those things so if you observe for the input we are having the style like this so for the normal input it will be having the gray border when i clip when i place the cursor in that it is going to turn the black border so we are going to apply that now so first of all as i said we have to find the particular class name for the what it is entity so here at the top i am going to write one more heading that is entity override that means overriding the entity entity override yeah so now i am going to write styling for the input first inspect so this is the input it is having the class names like and form control input content and and form control input we are having lot of classes so instead of that i will try with the normal input only because in the leaf node that means the last one is input only so i'll try to have for the input the classes so 
for the input only i just write border radius is equal to 0 and border is equal to 1 px solid gray important and here also i'll just write important so if you are not interested writing styling you can get rid of this lecture because we already got the form you can continue with the next lecture so from now i will be working on the styling only yeah here you can see we got the forms with the different borders so now instead of zero i just add 2px padding not padding border radius looking cool and uh, height should be 40 pixels for all the buttons and input fields height should be 40 pixels important yeah looking clean now uh, instead of border gray i am going to have i'll decrease the opacity only for the border gray so here you can play with the opacity we don't want the dark colors we want just light yeah it's just matching so now we got uh, input so if i hover on this i'm getting this box shadow so i don't want this box shadow if i hover on this i just need to highlight the border color so for that what i will do means input focus on input focus i just want outline is equal to none i don't want outline i don't want box shadow box shadow also none what i want is i want just border width 1 px solid gray important so here also we are having 1 px solid but here the opacity is 0 0.5 here i am having the complete gray now let's see super here you can see it's getting highlighted when i hover on this now uh, we need to increase the padding in this card because here you can see in the deployed version it is looking good but in our uh, current version it is not looking good as expected so let's go to the register here let's add the padding 3 or 4 yeah it's better now now we have the labels for the labels also i want to apply the styling so go to the index.css so labels comes under also entity we are overriding the entity label so font size let's make it 14 and see how it is looking it's looking very small let's make it 16 somewhat better and uh, color should be black yeah superb now everything is looking clean so now for this nice to meet you and for this form i am going to have some space and first of all we have to decrease the space between these form items so if i inspect these somewhere we are having huge space this is on to call and yeah here you can see and form item there is a class called and form item here we are having the space so just copy this class name and form item and here i am going to write dot and form item margin zero important margin zero important uh, let's see yeah cool so now let's play with the margin so left and right it should be zero only so for top and bottom i want just 5px and zero uh, let's make it 10 yeah looking clean now we just need to add the button so here you can see our uh, bottom of the password we have the button so let's go to the register button from the entity button name will be register and for this button i am going to have the class name as primary button primary button so we are going to have two buttons in the application one is primary and one is secondary so copy this primary button class and go to the common styling and here i am going to write the styling for the primary button so let's have the background color which is similar to the deployed version 
I'll I'm putting the color picker here. I'm copying the color. So you can have your own colors. There is no condition like you have to use only my colors, all those things. So let's make it important. Yeah. So we got the button. So as I said, for the button as well as the input field, I want height should be 40 pixels and uh, width should be 100 percent width should be 100 percent and color should be white color should be white important that's all cool so font weight should be 500 i'll just write font size font size should be 18 px important 18 is too high let's make it 16 yeah 16 and for this button also i am going to have mt3 margin top 30 cool so we got the uh, registration form now so in the next lecture we will continue with the styling as well as the replica for the login form thank you Welcome back guys. In the last lecture we have started the registration form. So in this lecture we are going to continue with the styling and we are going to replicate the same page for the login. So we have stopped with the buttons part. So we got the button and bottom of that button we should have the link. So here I will write the link from the react router DOM. So the link should navigate me to the link to so this is the registration page so it should navigate to the login i just write click here to login let's see yeah we got this button now just go to the index.css so it should comes under common styling so common styling i just add uh, anchor tag so not anchor tag i will add some class because in the common styling for everything we will be having the class dot anchor dot anchor tag so color should be normal black color should be black later we will change it if you don't like these colors first of all to get started and to make it look good we just need to apply color anchor and uh, uh, text decoration underline text decoration underline and font size same 16 px font size 16 px important now go to the register and for this link just apply the class name anchor now let's see yeah here you can see we got the button as expected so you can also apply mt3 for these also or mt2 margin top so margin top is not applying i don't know why let me apply my3 for the button so it should apply both top and bottom yeah instead of my3 let's keep it my2 yeah looking cool so here you can see if i hover on this i am getting uh, the underline is getting gone so i'll go to the index.css and dot anchor on hover on hover also i want the underline text decoration underline important there should not be any change yeah now it is perfect so now let's style this nice to meet you okay let's go to the card title under the authentication form so this is the authentication so in this authentication dot authentication we will be having dot card title so we will be having only one card title in the authentication so let's have this so we have the same now for this i am going to have background color is equal to something like orange orange red we got the background color and i just write 
color should be white color should be white important and uh, max width should be max content max width should be max content important yeah this looks clean now just add some padding padding is equal to 10 px adding 10 px now uh, bottom and padding uh, let's make it 7 and uh, left and right let's make it 15 7 px 15 px okay so now i'll just write margin left minus 30 px uh, let's make it 40 that's all and uh, let's have border bottom left radius 5px or 10 or 10 yeah looking cool now i'm going to import my font into the application so in the entire application i'll be using only one font that is Montserrat. So if you go to the Google Fonts, if you click on this, so there will be a font called as Montserrat. So in all my projects, I'll use only this font. So after selecting, you just need to click on the import. Just click on the import statement and paste it at the top. And then you will need to have one line for all the components and for all the elements. So I just put star for oh, sorry for everything it should be Montserrat font only. Now let's see. Yeah, I got my font ready. So now uh, what we are left in the registration. Yeah, the form submit event. So after clicking on the register button, we have to get these values into the console. So anyhow, we will send it to the backend. So first of all, to have to uh, to check whether the form is working fine or not, you have to get the values into the console. So for that, you need to know how to submit the form in the entity. So first of all, for the button, you just need to have one prop that is HTML type is equal to submit. Now for this form, you just need to have one function on finish on finish you just need to write on finish now i am going to write the definition of this function const on finish is equal to i'll get the values to this uh, on finish function as the parameter and uh, so i am going to console log received values of the form is equal to values so i'll put it in the uh, parenthesis that's all so refresh so i'm opening the console once so we don't have any errors now i'm going to write name is equal to ronaldo email is equal to ronaldo at the rate gmail.com and password i will write one two three four five six seven eight so if you want to hide this password, you just need to go to the input and make it type is equal to password. So now I'm going to click on the register button. Here you can see I got the form values. So I'll expand. So name is equal to Ronaldo. Email is equal to Ronaldo at the gmail.com. Password is equal to one two three four five six seven eight. Now I am going to have uh, different values. Name is equal to Roman. Password is equal to Roman. Oh, email is equal to Roman at gmail dot com. Password would be same. Register. Again, I got the values. So email name password. So by this we have completed the registration form in the front end. So in this area we are going to have the API call that we are going to discuss in the next section. So first of all, we are going to replicate it for the login form. So just copy the entire form and paste it for the login. 
so wherever there is register you just need to make it login wherever there is register just make it login so here for the card title instead of nice to meet you let's make it welcome back welcome back now we don't require the name in the login form we just need email and password so here instead of register just make it login here for the link tag it should navigate me to the register and the text should be click here to register click here to register and remaining i think everything would be same so received values of the form all those things so let's see the output once so this is the register form right now i will click on the login super here you can see we got the login form now i will click on this link click here to register click here to login superb so we have completed the login and the registration screens in the front end so let me add the background color also so the background color is all similar to the normal primary color of the button only so let's go to the index.css so this is the authentication div right i just write background color is equal to same this cool so now we got everything ready so if you want to keep the project title anywhere in this login and registration form also we can keep or else we will work on that extra styling in the ending sections so thank you guys so in the next section we'll be working on the authentication for the back end so we are having the values of the front end the like name email and password so we have to send that and we have to perform the all the authentication process everything so thank you see you in the next section welcome back guys in the last section we have completed the authentication that means login and registration screens in the front end now in this section we are going to work on the login and registration api endpoints on the back end so first of all to work with the endpoints we need a model for the user so then only we could write the api endpoints for login and registration so first in the root folder i am going to create a new one called as the models so let me close everything in the ui yeah so now i am going to create a new folder called as models in the root in this models first i am going to create user model dot js so to create the model we require the mongoose package already we have installed that so i am going to import it const mongoose is equal to require mongoose now i am going to write const user schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema so the first one will be name type is equal to string and required is equal to true then we'll be having email type is equal to string required is equal to true then password type is equal to string required is equal to true so if you want to add any additional fields you can add so right now we are using only these three so then i'm going to have timestamps true somewhere we have a mistake this is okay oh it's curly brace yeah so now we got the user schema then we need to create the model with the help of the user schema const user model is equal to mongoose dot model so the first parameter will be the collection name collection name will be users and the second parameter will be the schema that is user schema now we are going to export this user model module dot exports is equal to module dot exports is equal to user model that's all so now we have the model ready so the next step is we have to write the api endpoints for the login and registration with the help of this model so in the next lecture we'll be working on that thank you
welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the registration and login endpoints for the authentication so first i am going to create a new folder called as the routes in the root folder because it is a backend related routes now in these routes i am going to create the first one will be user route user route dot js so all the operations that means all the api endpoints or all the api functionalities which are related to the user that we are going to write in this user route only so in the server.js we are going to connect it after exporting so first to create the router we just need the express app here const express is equal to require express then we require router const router is equal to express router now I am going to create the two required endpoints to get started. So the first one will be router dot post register route register and every function should be async only because we are going to use the async await format. So every function should be async. So right now i'll keep this empty so just make this function async so this is the structure router dot post this is the endpoint and this is the callback function so whenever this endpoint is called from the uh, api not api from the client so the function which is present here will be executed so in this uh, async function every api should look like this try catch block so we have to write all our logic in the try block. So if anything goes wrong, it will go to the catch block and it will throw the error to the front end. So this is the API structure. So for the first time itself only, I will explain. So first we have to write the endpoint, then callback function. Then in the callback function, the structure will be try catch block because we are using the async. So for all the MongoDB operations, we will use the await keyword for the functions to call. Now let's copy this and paste it for the login so both are post methods only because we are getting the data from the front end so this is login now i am going to export this router module dot exports is equal to router format document so we have the two endpoints now login and registration so now we need to connect this endpoint to the server.js so it's very simple so first we have to create a uh, variable for that so here only i will create const user route is equal to require so in the require you have to mention the path of the route so it is present in routes folder with the name user route so we got this variable now you have to tell the server that whenever an api request is coming with the keyword so i'll just use app dot use so the first parameter will be api request so whenever the api request is coming with the keyword user followed by uh, uh, first api slash user so please go and search the api endpoints in the user route so if a api request is having the endpoint like slash api slash user dot uh, user slash login so it will go and search the endpoints in the user route so this is the process so we got the endpoint ready and whenever an api is having the variables to destructure from the client that means so if the login endpoint the client will send username and password in the json format so to uh, destructure that json you just have to add one line here that is app dot use express dot json so then only we could able to destructure now we are ready to work with the registration endpoint so let's go to the user route and close everything here so first of all we have to install one library called as the bcrypt to has the passwords so let me check whether we have installed or not so we have only json web token but we don't have the bcrypt library so just go and install in the second terminal which is a node terminal npm i bcrypt so if you want to follow the documentation just go to the npm bcrypt so here you can see if you scroll down you can able to see the documentation 
so it's very simple to has the password with the help of the bcrypt so first you have to create the salt then you have to attach the salt to the password so the password will be encrypted yeah it got installed successfully so if you observe the dependencies we got a new one bcrypt version 5.0.1 now i'm going to restart the server using the nodemon nodemon server yeah so both node.js server started mongodb connection also successful so this is the end point so whatever the logic you write you have to write in the try block only as i said so first you have to import the model const user is equal to require uh, model slash the file name will be user route user model user model so now i am going to write const password is equal to request dot body dot password so you have to encrypt this password so i am going to write const so first you have to generate the salt salt is equal to await Oh, you have to import the bcrypt yeah so i'm getting the auto snippets anyhow so const bcrypt is equal to require bcrypt js so now we have to generate the salt in the bcrypt await bcrypt dot gen salt so gen salt is nothing but the generate salt with the 10 rounds so to generate the salts we are using the number 10 so this is the pass uh, this is the process you have to follow so of course you have to even if you buy hard also no problem because every time we are following this structure only to encrypt and decrypt the passwords using the bcrypt so we got the salt now we need to encrypt the password with the help of this salt and the bcrypt hash method so now i am going to write const encrypted password is equal to our hashed password we can also called as hashed password hashed password is equal to await bcrypt dot hash password and salt so this is the salt and this is the password so we are encrypting the password with the help of the salt rounds so we got the salt and we got the password so now in the hashed password we will be having the encrypted format of the password so it is very difficult to decode or uh, bcrypt so now i am going to attach this hashed password to the request body request dot body dot password is equal to hashed password now i'll just write const new user is equal to new user with the request dot body so in the request dot body we will be having the name email and password control s so if you observe in the terminal we are getting an error no worries uh, we will check later so first let's complete this endpoint so await new user dot save so this is the method to save a document in the mongodb so let me remove all these spaces yeah so now if the response is successful we will stay in the try block else we will be navigated to the catch block so here uh, i'll just send response dot status 200 i don't want json i will directly send in the object so message is equal to user created successfully and i just write success is equal to true success is equal to true so now let's see what is the error it is throwing cannot find module bcrypt js already we have installed right package json okay we just installed bcrypt not bcrypt js sorry for that npm i bcrypt js even in the npm also it is having bcrypt js okay it is having bcrypt uh, let me check whether we are having bcrypt js also actually we are having both yeah let's see one of it will work npm start 
oh not npm start it's nodemon start nodemon server yeah we don't have any errors should work i think that's all so here you can see if you observe we have written the registration logic without checking any user exist or not so we are registering based on the email id so before registering the user first you have to check whether the email is already present in the collection or not so here you can see this is the line right we are saving so above this line or else here only we could check after writing uh, before writing all this logic only first if uh, okay i'll just write const user exist user exist is equal to await so user dot find one so we are finding with the help of request dot body dot email so now i'm going to check if user exist i'm going to return response dot status 400 and it should be send message is equal to so we should follow the same structure we have to use the complete message keyword user already exist and i will send the success is equal to false success is equal to false even you can send the 200 also because we are still in the try block only until unless we go to the catch block we should send the status 200 but success is equal to false so it is not going to execute because we are having the return statement if this is false only it is going to execute the remaining statement so if the user is already exist it will throw the error with message user already exist and success is equal to false so i think we are good with the registration okay we can try so in the catch block also i'll just send response dot status 500 error creating user success is equal to false that's all so github copilot is helping me a lot to write the repeated code everything all those things so anyhow i'm going to explain even i get the snippets every line so here i'm get i'm throwing the error with the status code 500 and send message error creating the user and success is equal to false and you can also send the error directly so even for the sending responses to the client so this will be the structure so every time you have to mention success property so based on this success only we are going to check in the front end so if success is equal to true we are going to show the true message in the front end so that's all now let me uh, call these api register api from the front end so then we can work on the login if registration is successful so in the front end go to the package.json so here you have to add the proxy proxy is equal to you just have to add the backend endpoint it should be http quack quack localhost localhost so we are running our backend on the 5000 port so this is the proxy now let's go to the registration page so i think we have not installed the axios in the front end let me check yeah we have not installed the axios so let me import two libraries now npm install axios redux redux toolkit redux toolkit as well as uh, react hot toast react hot toast and this is for showing the toast messages so we will work on the redux and redux toolkit later first we have to work on the api call with the axios so after adding the proxy anyhow you have to restart the server then only the front end will be connected to the back end yeah the server got restarted now i'll just type npm start so we are done with the back end let's go to the front end and open register.js page so here first i will import the axios import axios from axios so this is the registration right on finish so first let's make this function async 
here also we are following the same structure try cache block try and uh, catch so first in the try block i am going to write const response is equal to await axios dot post the endpoint will be slash api slash user slash register and we are going to send the values so now i am going to check the condition if response dot data dot success so the server got restarted response dot data dot success we are going to show the success message else we are going to show the error message so we will write the responses later so in the catch block also we are going to write something so let's restart the server first so and i'm also going to install the react hot toast import toast from import toast from react hot toast so let's see the documentation of this react hot toast once so we are going to show the success and error messages based on that library only react hot toast so just need to add and here you have to add these uh, toast in any one of the app.js all those things then we have to call it so they have not given the exact code base toast dot success yeah so here you can see you just have to add this toaster somewhere in the app.js copy so i'll go to the app.js app.js and uh, in the browser router only i'll add that let's import this toaster yeah so top center and uh, reverse order is equal to false now here so if response dot data dot success i'll just write toast dot success response dot data dot message here also else the, that means toast dot error response dot data dot message anyhow we will get the message in the data only so in the catch block i don't put the backend message i'll directly put toast dot error something went wrong toast dot error something went wrong and that's all so we will add the loading uh, later after after implementing the redux and redux toolkits we are going to add the loader in the global level so because if we have the loader in every page we have to write const loading is equal to set loading all those things we don't want that so we will write the loaders in the global level now uh, where it is let's close everything yeah refresh so the refresh is working fine let's go to the register and i'll open the network to see the logs uh this is the network so i am entering so here the password is also uh, hidden now so i'll enter roman email is equal to roman195 at gmail.com password is equal to 1234567 so let's see the network call is empty now i am going to hit on the register button user created successfully we got the message from the back end here you can see we got a beautiful toast message so we don't have any errors in the back end it seems yeah we don't have any errors so every time we are going to print the error in the console also in the back end so we need not to debug every time whenever we get an error so directly the error will be printed in the console now let's go and cross check in the mongodb whether we got the users or not refresh here you can see we got the user so we got roman we got email we got password so with the encrypted format created it updated it and this is the user id 
so our registration process is successful now uh, what i'm going to do is in the register page i'm going to create a hook const navigate is equal to use navigate so this should be imported from the react router dom so if it is success first we are going to show the toast message then we are going to show one more toast message registration successful right so redirecting to login page i'll just write navigate to login that's all so now we will try the error scenario also so right now we have registered with the email roman right so if you see roman195 at gmail.com so now i will use the different name different password but same email so i just write uh varen email is equal to i'll use the same roman at 195 at gmail.com password is equal to 1234578 so the expected result is it has to throw the error with user already exist now let's see register superb here you can see user already exist because this user is already registered with our database so we cannot register with the same email address now i am going to write varen195 at gmail.com so now the expected scenario is first it has to show the message user created successfully then it has to show the message like redirected to login page and it has to redirect to the login page let's check now superb redirecting to the login page now we are in the login page so by this we have successfully completed the registration endpoint so in the next lecture we'll be working on the login so login is somewhat difficult compared to registration because we just have to implement the jwt authentication storing the tokens all those things so in the next lecture we'll be working on that thank you Welcome back guys. In the last lecture we have completed the registration process successfully in our authentication module. Now in this lecture we are going to work on the login. So the login will not be completed in one lecture. So we need around 2-3 lectures. So anyhow let's get started. So first of all we have two users in the DB. Let's see you can see Roman and Varen. So we have two users. So to implement the normal login, it's very easy. We will send the email and password from the front end and we will decrypt that password and we will compare it with the back end. So then uh, we will get the response. If it is successful, login successful, else login fail. If it is login successful, we will navigate the user to the protected routes. That means home page, doctor's page, appointments page like that. So before that, we have to send the token to the front end. So after login, every API call should send that token to the back end. So if the token is valid, then only we have to send the response like home page data, doctor's data, appointments data like that. So it's uh, somewhat difficult to listen. So while implementing, you will understand better. So let's start the implementation. So first of all, let's go to the login page. So in the login, first I will complete the front end. So copy everything that you have written in the back end and put it here and make the function async. Make the function async. So here uh, toast is not imported. Let's import the toast. Control S. Axios and uh, on all these also navigate is not required here. Yeah, it's required because after the successful login, we need to navigate to the home page. Const navigate is equal to use navigate and it should be imported. And we have Axios. Let's import Axios. That's all. So const response, everything is looking good here. So we have to change the endpoint to the login. If, uh, if it is successful, we are going to show the message and instead of uh, showing toast redirected to login page, you can show redirecting to home page. And here you have to redirect to the home page. Before that, you just have to put the information what you are getting from the backend in the local storage. So I just write local storage dot set item. 
so we have to put based on the token we will get only token from the back end response dot data dot token that's all so response dot data dot token mm, okay cool so based on this token only we will uh, send the remaining authorization all those things in the protected routes so leave it about all those things because it is confusing first let's focus on only login so whatever the data we get from the back end in the login mechanism that we will store in the local storage then we will navigate to the home page that's all so the error and catch scenarios will be same okay let's go to the back end mm, where is it close everything in the front end user route so let's make the cl uh, code very clean then only you could understand better even if you come back after one day one day or one week so even if you want to write the comments also you can write so this is the login so first of all let me import the json web token here so here you can see i got already the suggestion cons jwt is equal to json web token so you can use anything so just the short form i have written jwt so now i'll explain every line and everything even if i get the suggestion so first here you can see i got the suggestion like const user is equal to await user dot find one email so we are going to find the email first so if you don't have the email we will not even check the password we will throw the error like user does not exist so here you can see i got the suggestion response dot status 200 and sending the message user does not exist success is equal to false so it is not going to execute any code after this written statement if there is no user so if there is user we have to compare the password now const encrypted password or hashed password oh not here you just have to compare with the db password directly so this line so i will explain this line so const is match so is match is nothing but so we already have the user in the db in this variable user variable so user dot password is equal to encrypted password because in the db we have the encrypted password right so user dot password is equal to encrypted password and request dot body dot password is equal to normal password so in this variable what we are doing means we are comparing the encrypted password with the normal password that's the reason we have used the message bcrypt dot compare the first parameter will be the normal password and the second parameter will be the encrypted password so you need not to worry about the salt encryption decryption all those things the bcrypt library will take care of that so bcrypt dot compare so it will compare based on the salt which is stored in the user dot password so you need not to worry so if is match so if is match we are going to work on the token part now so if is match is true then the user is valid that means the email and password present in the db then we have to generate the token and that token you have to store it in the front end so now let's see so actually it is having the is not match so that means if it is incorrect password we are going to throw the error so response dot status 200 and send message is equal to password is incorrect that means password is not matched with the db password and success is equal to false here you can see already we have uh, sent uh, two responses to the front end both are error responses only the first error response is user does not exist and the second error response is password incorrect so only in the try block we will have one success response remaining all the responses will be false only so else so we are going to generate the token let's see so we have the method called as the jwt sign so jwt sign method which uh, will generate the token so the first parameter will be id so the data that you want to encrypt using the jwt so once you decode the jwt token that data you will get the first parameter will be the payload and the second parameter will be the secret key process dot env dot jwt secret so if you go to the dot env where it is we don't have any variable for that now i'm going to create so let's see 
JWT secret. JWT secret is equal to. So I am going to create uh, my project name only Shea Healthy. So this is my secret key. So even while decrypting, I need this code. Then only I could able to decrypt. So JWT secret is my process variable and Shea Healthy is my process variable value. So with the help of this, I am going to decrypt it. And the third parameter in the sign is the validation. That means validity. So uh, at what time this token is going to expire? So we are going to write expires in one hour or one day or anything. So I am going to write one day, one D. So for every day they have to uh, log in. That means uh, every day the token will be expired and they have to re-log in. So this is the token. So if the token generation is successful, we are going to write response dot send status will be 200 response dot oh first we have to write the status response dot status will be 200 and uh, message is equal to login successful success is equal to true and we are sending the token so if you want to send the token in the data also you can send because every time we are using the data format only right so here also we will use the same so data will be token we don't need object we just need direct token data is nothing but token it is a normal string it is not an object so we will store this token in the ui now let's go to the uh, front end so the login mechanism is completed in the back end now so we have to handle the error scenario so response dot status 500 and we are sending error logging in or is equal to you can write anything here because in the catch block in the front end we will show only one message every time that is something went wrong it's a network issue or browser issue some whatever it may be and here also as i said in the last lecture every time we just need to print the error in the console so we could able to dish, uh, debug very easily whenever there is any api mistakes error that's all even in the registration also i will write CLG error that's all we need now let's go to the pages login so here response dot data dot data it's not token it's response dot data dot data in this we will get the token already so I think we are good so let's test this API now so before that we should have the home page home dot JS rfce home.js rfce so let's go to the app.js and create a route for it so right now for the temporary purpose i am keeping this route normally because home is the protected route we just have to keep that home in the separate window not separate window separate file protected routes home page that's all yeah so let's check this now okay go to the login yeah we are navigating to the login if it is successful so now i am going to enter some invalid passwords first so i log in with the roman credentials roman 195 gmail.com password is equal to i will just one two three let me open the network and also console we don't have any errors network login password is incorrect so we have the email but the password is incorrect now i will change the email we should get the message like user does not exist login so you can see user does not exist so whatever the logic we are writing we are getting the expected scenarios only now i am entering the password valid password two three four five six seven eight login so this is the valid password that i have entered login you can see login successful now i am in the home page so if i see the local storage i should have one string with the token super here you can see we got the token and we have the value so this is our jwt token so for all the request 
from the next lecture we have to send this token along with the headers so first we have suppose in the home page we just want to display the list of doctors so the api call would be get all doctors so in the get all doctors we have to send the headers with authorization bearer token so the bearer token will be this jwt token so in the back end we will verify this token in every api call so if the token uh, the if you decrypt this token we will get the user id so if the user id is present in the database then only we will send the response to the front end so we will also check the user id present and also if the token is expired or not so if you send this token after one day it will be expired so you will get the response like token expired and you have to re-log in so there won't be any issues with the hackers all those things if you implement this kind of mechanism so in the next lecture we'll be working on that and we'll work on the protected routes first thank you